Hi, this is Josh with Resort TV One, and today we're reliving the classics at Epcot. This is part of a new video series that we're going to be doing where we explore the history of all the attractions here at Epcot, including some that aren't even here anymore. For this video, we'll be focusing on Future World West as well as Spaceship Earth, and Spaceship Earth being right behind me, being right in the middle and the icon of the park, and then we'll move over to Future World West, which includes the land, imagination, and the living seas. So be sure to leave us a like and a comment and let us know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future and what attractions you'd like us to cover. Also, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't already done so so that you get notified every time we go live or have a new video. So, let's get started. So as I said, we'll be checking out some of the history of some of the attractions here at Epcot, but we'll also be just getting you some great footage of some of the rides here and putting it kind of all on one video. And we're using our new 4K ultra low light camera to get you the best image and sound quality possible. Some dark rides like Spaceship Earth are really great with this camera. And speaking of Spaceship Earth, that's where we'll start right now. Spaceship Earth is the first attraction you come to here at Epcot, and it's also the most iconic. It's the symbol of the park. It's just an incredibly imposing structure. It's 18 stories tall. I believe uh, it's 180 feet tall. And Spaceship Earth has actually changed quite a bit since park opening back on October 1st, 1982. It's actually had four major versions with four different narrators. The first version that debuted in 1982 had narrator Lawrence Dobkin as the host. And there wasn't very much music. Uh, it was just kind of light background music and noise as it went along. And so that was the first version. And then in 1986, and by the way, that was sponsored by the Bell System. Then in 1986, AT&T took over sponsorship and they uh, tapped host Walter Cronkite, who was a news anchor at the time, as the host of that show. And he had a very iconic voice and a lot of people recognized him, uh, especially for moon landing coverage back in 1969 and things like that. So that was Walter Cronkite version, 1986 to 1994. Then, in 1994, Jeremy Irons took over, and Jeremy Irons uh, was the voice of Mufasa on The Lion King. That was 1994, and uh, again, AT&T was still the sponsor, and they changed the ending of the attraction as well. And the current version of the ride debuted in 2007 with narrator Judy Dench. And this version of the ride also debuted the touchscreens, as well as taking your picture and letting you choose your tomorrow. So again, that's the final and current version that debuted in 2007, and it was sponsored by Siemens, and I believe it's no longer sponsored by Siemens because you can see up here, Siemens logo is no longer on the signs as you enter the attraction. This mural has been here since the ride opened, and it's a very beautiful depiction of some of the themes discovered throughout the attraction. And you've got uh, early communication from the caveman down there at the bottom, uh, writing things on cave walls, all the way up to uh, satellite technology and space. All right, here we go. And I said, as I said before, the current version has these screens that were uh, debuted in 2007, along with narrator Judy Dench. And they take your picture up here, and again, that was only started in 2007. And guests get to uh, input their home where they live. And then at the end of the ride, it actually goes on a globe at the end and shows you where people live. Now here's a little trivia that, like a grand and miraculous spaceship, part of the narration has been around since the ride opened. Very dramatic. Now this uh, movie type screen here with the uh, cavemen and mammoths and all that was actually added in 2007. There were uh, just fleeting images of cavemen and mammoths before and they actually turned into video in the newest version. However, this uh, cave scene is the same as it was on opening day with maybe some minor improvements to the animatronics. So pretty much everything until we get close to the top is the same as it was or similar to the way it was on opening day. So we'll show a few scenes here and just let you enjoy. Unfortunately, 
and it also brings with it the dawn of great civilization. And we have to thank the Phoenicians here for sure. Which none of the others can understand. But the Phoenicians, who trade with all of them, they create a simple commonality species. Like the Phoenicians, they invented Now this scene actually has changed. And the birth of the high-tech life. In the first several versions of this ride, this scene was not about math, but about drama, about Greek theater. And in the 2007 version of the ride, it was changed to uh, cover th uh, to cover mathematics. With lessons learned from the Greeks, we built the first World Wide Web and it's leading us into the future. And this scene has not changed too much, except for there used to be projections of chariots running behind the uh, animatronics here. But then we hit a roadblock. Rome falls. And the great library of Alexandria in Egypt is burned. Much of our learning is destroyed, lost forever. Can you smell Rome burning? So we think. Now there is a hidden Mickey there next to the sleeping monk. In 1450, Gutenberg invents the movable type printing. Travel they do. Books make it easier to invent the future in every. I believe these musicians here were added in 1994. Now this scene hasn't changed except for Walter Cronkite used to say, Behold the majesty of the Sistine ceiling, which I always loved. Behold the majesty of the Sistine ceiling. The only major change here that I can remember is this little boy used to face towards the vehicles and now he just faces kind of towards the back wall there, the streets. So it's kind of strange. And also what he said, uh, he used to say extra, extra New York City. So anyway, and I believe the uh, narration has changed here a little bit as well. I believe some of this scene has changed. I believe they used to have more movie screens than just one here and the movie has changed as well. And this scene has definitely changed as well. Uh, it's about the moon landing now. And um, I'm not sure exactly what it used to be about. I believe it was a family room, but uh, it wasn't about this. And somewhere in this area used to be a place uh, in 1994 where uh, a boy from the United States and a girl from Japan were talking about uh, different things like the girl had just played a baseball game and uh, the boy was showing her uh, all kinds of different things on a video call. So that was done in 1994 and I believe in the earlier versions there was a network operations center here where the computers are. So anyway. There's just one problem. They're as big as a house. The solution comes in. All that was around in this area, and I don't remember exactly where it was, but it was in this area. And there's Steve Jobs. Not officially, but that's what a lot of people think. This Matrix thing was added in uh, 2007 as well. And this hasn't changed too much. Um, is now rotating back. Just the music. Please remain seated. Attention, you are now rotating backward for your return to Earth. Please remain seated, time traveler. There used to be kind of a space Attention station up here that we'll show you here in just a minute. Seated. Remnants your of it are still to present. To I love how my camera picks up the stars here. Now, of course, this entire descent has changed quite a bit. The screen, of course, was not here, and there was uh, scenery around. I'm not sure what there was in the first version, because I actually never saw the first version. Um, but the Walter Cronkite, Walter Cronkite version, the second version, uh, which debuted in 1986, actually had uh, kind of purple screens, children running around, things like that. And um, 
it was um, based on the song Tomorrow's Child, so that was a lot of fun as well. These triangles were added for this 2007 version, but there's really not much else to see. Now besides Tomorrow's Child in 1986 and kind of children running and jumping around and kind of purple cloudy images, that's kind of what I remember and what I've seen in videos. And of course video quality wasn't as good back then. In 1994, um, they had a lot more. There was a virtual classroom on the uh, really steep hill back there where all the, all the lights are hanging down. And, and that was a lot of fun. And then also, they had right in this area, they actually had... Um, actually had a future city sitting here showing all the power and all the communications that were coming out of the city and that was a lot of fun as well. It was like the global network that they talked about throughout the ride. And of course after you design your future, sometimes it doesn't do the facial recognition quite as well as we like, <laughs> cut off the top of my head, but uh, then it shows you about your future and how it could be based on technology. That's kind of the theme of this section, this uh, version of the ride is how technology could be in the future. And then of course after the ride you go out into Project Tomorrow here. And this is all sponsored by Siemens. And uh, when the ride first opened it was actually sponsored by the Bell System. And then after that it was sponsored by AT&T. And it went sponsorless for a while after that until Siemens picked it up. And when this first opened, this little uh, Project Tomorrow area, this was called Earth Station, and it was just basically um, a lot of places to sit, kind of just relax and cool off. And then there were also world key information uh, around the walls here, world key information system, which were basically uh, a touchscreen computers that you could uh, find out information about uh, the park, and you could also book reservations for um, different restaurants around Epcot, and I believe Walt Disney World. So anyway, it was really cool because in 1982, video chatting was not really a thing. So. Uh, anyway, that was what was here back in uh, the early days of the ride. And then for the 1994 Jeremy Irons version, they actually had AT&T's Global Neighborhood here. And there were a lot of attractions. Uh, in the middle here, there was a, a kind of a simulator where you could stand on it and it kind of rocked it back and forth and it showed how the, basically how the internet worked. Uh, and that was when the internet was very, very new back in 94. So they were trying to kind of get people used to the idea of a global connected society. Uh, and there was like a big phone where you could call your family and there was video chatting and stuff like that. Again, just a lot of new technology to people at that time. And of course now this debuted in 2007, Project Tomorrow, again sponsored by Siemens. And by the way, if you're curious, there are 11,324 triangles covering the outside of Spaceship Earth here. This is one of my favorite views here in Epcot right here across from Journey into Imagination. And of course, Journey into Imagination has changed quite a bit over the years and we'll cover that here in just a bit. The paint scheme has also changed on that. It used to be mostly light blue and now you've got the orange highlights on the side of the building. And the next attraction that we'll cover on Reliving the Classics at Epcot here is the land. And the land is one of the original pavilions, again, that opened in 1982 with the rest of Epcot, but again, it's also undergone several major changes. Even the logo and the sign itself have changed quite a bit. Speaking of logos, every pavilion at Epcot used to have a logo, and we'll uh, talk about that here a little bit later, but this entry area with the garden and the uh, stream is actually new too. That was not here when the attraction opened. And there used to be a glass dome here, and I always mentioned this but this tree got too tall and they had to remove it but the glass dome kind of fit with the rest of the uh, glass theming for the main structure of the land pavilion and walking into the building here you immediately see the huge atrium which uh, actually of course is housed by the big glass dome that you see and that's the icon really of, of the land itself but you also see these huge balloons in vibrant colors and the balloons have always been here at least in some form but they used to move up and down when the attraction was first opened. So, that was something that changed during the refurb. And there have been three major versions of the Land Pavilion here, and some of the attractions inside. Actually, when the boat ride first opened, it was Listen to the Land, and there was a song that was on the original soundtrack, uh, Listen to the Land, it was a pretty catchy little song. Um, and that actually version of the attraction and version of the pavilion was sponsored by Kraft. 
and the whole bottom area of the um, food court and all the attractions were completely different. They had kitchen cabaret over here in place of Soren. Um, and then they also had a fountain and uh, the food court was just completely different. It was arranged more like a farmer's market and directly underneath of me were still the restaurants, but they were arranged more like little stands in a farmer's market. And then of course, Listen to the Land, like I said, was over here. And the movie, uh, which used to be Circle of Life and is no longer open now, at that time, it was Symbiosis. And again, that was all sponsored by Kraft. And then in 1993, the sponsor changed to Nestle. And uh, they actually had a refurbishment of the ride and they called it Living with the Land and they changed some of the scenes in the beginning, which we'll take a look at here in just a minute. But they changed some of the scenes at the beginning of the boat ride, but a lot of the attraction remained the same with the addition of greenhouse technology. Of course, the greenhouse is always changing as new technology becomes available. Oh, another thing uh, I forgot to mention was the Garden Grill restaurant over there it used to be called the Land Grill Room. And then I believe in 1993, it was changed to the Garden Grill. It's always rotated. It's always seen scenes from the boat ride, but it was changed to the Garden Grill back in uh, 1993. Another change in 1993 was Kitchen Cabaret, which is where Soren is now, or which was where Soren is now, was changed to Food Rocks, and that was a lot of fun. And Food Rocks actually operated until the third major version of the attraction opened in 2005. And in 2005, there was a complete overhaul of the whole pavilion, and Nestle actually helped oversee this because they uh, had said that they wanted to have more of a say in the refurbishment of the pavilion. So they created this new food court type area where there are different seasons, basically. There are basically four seasons. Um, and I'm not sure which one is which. I would believe that would be summer over here, maybe autumn with the uh, kind of orange colors, probably winter directly underneath of me. I'm just guessing. And then spring over here. But either, one, either way, they, uh, they stand for the four seasons, each section. And they were trying to get better traffic flow. It used to be there were just kind of tables and chairs everywhere around a central fountain. So they were trying to go for actually better traffic flow through the pavilion because they knew that Soren was coming in. And Soren was very popular out at California Adventure at Disneyland. And so they wanted to bring Soren here. And of course, Soren was first Soren over California. And now it's Soren around the world. And then the last major change that the pavilion underwent was that the boat ride and the whole pavilion was sponsored by Chiquita in 2009. The sponsor changed. And you can see that on the sign there. And of course, I mentioned that Symbiosis was here until 1995. Eventually, it was replaced in 1995 with The Circle of Life, an environmental fable. And that was closed, I believe, just uh, in 2017. Or it may have been closed just this year in 2018, but it was just recently closed. And here's a better look at the Garden Grill. And it's actually a character dining experience. Now you can see uh, Mickey Mouse over there walking away from us. And you can see uh, Chip as well. The restaurant turns very slowly. It's almost hard to see. And it goes past all the different scenery um, in the land boat ride. And there are two floors to this pavilion, and now that we're underneath the entrance area, you can see the uh, food court restaurants that you can go into. And this used to be, like I said, a farmer's market type area, and there wasn't that kind of uh, overhang there that was blocking uh, entrance or view of the uh, eating establishments. It was all kind of more open in this area. But I think it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, they had the checkouts all in a centralized area and kept everything kind of contained back in this uh, food service area. And by the way, Soren over California was changed to Soren around the world in 2016. Also a little music trivia, and it's hard to hear the music or the soundtrack at all with all the uh, noise in this particular pavilion, but right now the soundtrack is uh, movie themes, mostly based on flight uh, in honor of Soren. But originally the soundtrack was a mix of jazz and kind of uh, folk music, so it was a lot of fun. And that was when the fountain was in the middle. We always enjoyed eating here and enjoying the uh, beautiful jazz music. And like I said before, Living with the Land and the Pavilion are now sponsored by Chiquita. Even though it's not really mentioned in the uh, narration of the ride, or at least it didn't used to be. We'll see if it is now. And when this was redesigned in 1993 and changed to Living with the Land, they actually added all of these uh, environmental quotes on here. 
Some of them are by school children, and some of them are by famous leaders and uh, stars. All right, here we go on the ride. And as I said before, one of the major changes was uh, this beginning scene here at the beginning of the ride. Also, there actually was no narration on the ride other than with a guide. There was actually a, a, a guide that came in person to do narration on the ride. But now there's this recorded narration. The diversity and the often surprising nature of living with the land. So again, this beginning scene was different. It was more of a uh, symphony of the seed, and it wasn't this storm scene. And there used to be a, an actual human narrator on the boat. So there was a guide on the boat, and the guide would ride up front and would talk to you about the different scenes you were seeing, and through the greenhouse and everything else, it made for a more personal experience. But then, uh, I believe when, around when the time when the ride was refurbed in 1993, or maybe slightly after, they changed to this recorded narration, and it allowed for them to have more boats, and they didn't have to pay as many guides to be on the boats. ...from the flowing mud, extracting precious nutrients and minerals. These elements, when combined with sunlight, create the diverse living systems of our planet. And the narration is nice and relaxing, but a lot of people miss the more personal effect when the guides were here on the boat with you. More like the Jungle Cruise, I guess. For only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests and there's the Garden Grill restaurant up there. Productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives. And this part was actually the same as it was, I believe, when the ride opened. It hasn't really changed that much. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. It's gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil one day become home to the American farm. And the farmhouse was here when the ride opened. Forces at work on the land. By the way, the dog is based on Walt Disney's dog. effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use and sometimes overuse of the land. In our search for more... And these movies have changed Today, throughout the years. Today, we're learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. Yep, I'm pretty sure the movies are different as well as the music. So they go from the uh, older times when they didn't realize that the methods they were using were not good for the environment now to the current day where they do things that are better for the environment. In Japan, we're learning that by adding composted leaves and other plant material to our soil, we can reduce the need for fertilizers. In far now, here we are in the greenhouse. Laboratories, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the greenhouse hasn't changed much throughout the years. Just added plants and different types of technology. Now and into the future. And there is a behind the scenes tour you can take here if you're the interested. Diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. The areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. Half of all the seafood consumed globally. Tilapia, bass, and catfish, like the ones you see here, are three of the more popular crops raised by fish farmers. The sustainable system we're using here recycles the water in the tanks. As a result, 
we're able to save millions of gallons each year. But we're growing these crops. And of course, over here with the lettuce, they've got, they've been doing this for years, they've got Epcot spelled out on the top, and they've got Mickey here in the bottom. And they've got that created with the uh, two different colors of lettuce there. This one small area system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponics system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. Oh, this wasn't always here, the but it's really, a natural source really of cool. Fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another. So you great can hear the explanation there. It's really cool how the fish keep less. the water or keep the water clean for the lab, plants. Epcot scientists are and also they have this lab over here and it's been here for a while. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratories. Please keep your hands and feet inside the boat and remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop. So this scene was actually added later. And it's really cool how everybody uh, in the picture, everybody kind of matches their clothing and things like that to uh, the food that you see there. That's pretty cool. I believe this was added in the 1993 refurbishment. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed the uh, Living with the Lamb boat ride. And now we are, here we are on the other side of the pavilion, and you can actually see the really cool glass atrium with the balloons in front of it. Apologize if it was hard to hear some of my narration on the ride over the narration that's actually in the ride itself. Uh, the narration's really loud, but I wanted to make some comments along the way, so hopefully it made sense. And we're going to move on to our next attraction. And this side of Epcot over here where the land is, is actually called Future World West. It's because, of course, it's on the west side of the park. And the west side of the park, uh, you'll see a lot more waterways, everything is very curved, all the, all the planters, all the railings, everything is curved. Future World East is the exact opposite. There's no water features and everything is more angular and straight. And they designed that on purpose based on the subject matter of the pavilions here. Here you've got the land, you've got imagination, you've got the seas, all things that lend to a more uh, curvilinear approach to design. And especially the water here, just so beautiful in several different places here around Future World West. And as you can tell by the birds, the next attraction on our list here is the Seas with Nemo and Friends, which opened in 1986 as the Living Seas. So the Living Seas opened in 1986, and it was at the time the largest indoor aquarium in the country. It actually holds 5.7 million gallons of water. And this has uh, under, undergone only one major refurbishment since it was opened in 1986. And again, it did not open with the park. Remember, Epcot opened in 1982. This pavilion opened in 1986. Uh, and one of the reasons for that was they really had to make sure that the land underneath of it was sufficiently prepared to hold the weight of the water in the tanks. So again, when the pavilion opened in 1986, it was called the Living Seas. And then after the redesign, it opened in late 2006, early 2007 as the Seas with Nemo and Friends. And the two major changes to the pavilion were the addition of the Turtle Talk with Crush attraction, as well as, of course, the Nemo ride itself. And on this wall here was kind of a mural of a sunset uh, instead of the Nemo characters here. And it's got the same theme, but it was very beautiful before with the sunset mural. Now the entry into the attraction here has changed quite a bit. It used to be an exhibit about different uh, diving equipment and diving suits. And this uh, actual queue led into a theater. And the theater hosted a movie called The Sea. It was a dramatic presentation about how the seas were formed according to scientists. And after that theater, you actually would watch the movie and then you'd get on these hydrolators, which were simulators, that would take you down to Sea Base Alpha where all the uh, sea creatures were and the tanks and the, all the water exhibits were. So the idea was that we're going deep, deep underwater to get to these exhibits. 
this area here actually used to be a circular pre-show. It wasn't quite th Circle Vision 360, but here it is right here. This room used to be kind of a circular pre-show area. And they would project different images up. But the original sponsor of the pavilion was United Technologies, and it has not had a sponsor since United Technologies canceled its sponsorship. But this room was a circular pre-show area. And then this area was the Seas movie area and the Hydrolator area. I don't know exactly where it was in each area. But again, you watch the Seas movie, then you boarded the Hydrolator, which is basically like an elevator platform. But in reality, the elevator only, or Hydrolator only moved a couple inches. Most of it was just a simulation. Now, after you got off the Hydrolators, you would actually get onto these sea cabs. And the Nemo ride is on some of the same track as what the sea cabs used to be on, but the sea cabs were much shorter. So this is probably still the theater area, and then the hydrolators would be past that, and then the sea cabs would load past that. So they extended the track quite a bit. I believe I read over 200 feet the track was extended to create this ride. And the idea of the attraction is that we're finding Nemo again. It's a beautiful ride. It's very well, uh, very well decorated and the colors are bright and vibrant and the movie screens are used well also so it's a nice ride and you'll see at the end how they incorporate the tanks into the attraction it used to be on the sea cabs they actually uh, you were just riding through these passageways around the tanks themselves so all of this is added length to the ride It's not working, but the um, that the lantern fish here, I believe, is what it's called, is on a kooka arm. It's not moving right now, but it's actually the same arm that's used on Harry Potter Forbidden Journey, just a lot smaller, obviously. <laughs> I wonder if clown fish taste funny. <laughs> I don't think I trust Bruce. Now this tunnel, which now serves as the EAC, used to actually be a tunnel that was open. We're actually under the water right now in one of the tanks. And both sides of this used to be open with windows, and there were windows in the ceiling as well, where you could see that you were completely underwater here. And there were fish and all kinds of different uh, creatures that would swim around you. That was a lot of fun. So this is a really cool use of it as well, but I actually do miss being able to see the fish being in the water as you were riding through this area. Now, of course, here we are in the tank area. So you can see the projections here into the tank, but the tanks are all original, uh, but it used to be actually a lot more views of the tanks from the sea cabs, and a lot of that's blocked off by some of the scenes in the Nemo ride. And the sea cabs used to face forward as well. really cool technology though with the projections. They never stop. Now this exit area was the same as the exit area from the sea cabs and you come off into this main concourse here. And they actually have this dive tube and they still have dive shows uh, throughout the day at different points where you can watch a diver go in uh, to the tube here and see how they get into the tanks. And there are two floors here, and to me it looks kind of futuristic, almost like a space station. Uh, but most of the underwater viewing is upstairs, so we'll take a look at that here in just a minute. Earlier we mentioned Turtle Talk with Crush, and it opened again in 2004, and this used to be just one of the exhibit areas, and it's turned into a theater where Crush can interact with other guests. And each of these rooms on both floors had all kinds of different exhibits, even when the attraction opened, just about the sea and things like that. Of course, now that Nemo's taken over, um, 
we have this room kind of dedicated to sharks, which is still pretty educational and informative, but also has a gigantic photo spot picture area here. You can get your picture taken with Bruce. And here we've got tanks with all kinds of uh, different fish varieties and all kinds of different animals here. We've got eels and sponge and all kinds of different coral. Great stuff. And here's the manatee underwater viewing area. And then on the second floor, of course, is the upper viewing area for the manatees. And here's a look at the under sea viewing area. And you can see there second floor here is where you walk into that round area where you can it's kind of a rotunda where you can really see all areas of the tanks and on the lower floor is actually the unload area and the post show area of the traction where you can see all the different projections of the characters floating around I have a really really great variety of fish here and different sea life inside of these tanks And you can see a diver cleaning the tank there. But also, that particular passageway is where the EAC is in the ride, where you go through and you're with Crush and Squirt in the EAC. And you can see there used to be windows there on the top and on the sides of that because you're completely surrounded by water. So that was really cool as a part of the Sea Cab attraction that used to be in the pavilion when it opened in 1986. And by the way, the sea cabs actually closed in, uh, sometime in 2001, right after uh, September 11th or early 2002, I think due to uh, just budget cuts at that point, because Disney wasn't very busy right after 9-11 uh, happened. So the sea cab attraction actually only ran from 1986 to around 2001, 2002, even though the Living Seas was still intact and the Nemo hadn't taken over yet. And here's the exit and of course the gift shop. However, the gift shop was not always here. This area used to be hydrolators to take you back to the surface. The idea was that you had gone underwater, the first set of hydrolators after the movie, and then after that, the hydrolators would need to take you back to the surface so you could return to Epcot. And after the pavilion went under refurbishment in 2004 and 2005 to add all of the Nemo elements as well as the new ride, the hydrolators here were taken out, this gift shop was added, and actually this became the way to enter and exit the pavilion. And the reason for that was because uh, the front entrance was closed so that they could uh, take out the theaters and everything else so that they could put in the new Nemo ride. So the illusion of being underwater had to be cut short just basically because of uh, crowd flow issues. They didn't have time to have the hydrolators bring everybody down and back up anymore, especially since the only thing open was the Seabase Alpha where all the exhibits were during the refurbishment and during the time when the ride was added. So that's when the gift shop was added and when the hydrolators were taken out. Then when the attraction reopened as the Seas with Nemo and Friends, of course, this stayed a gift shop and uh, there was no need for the hydrolator anymore. There was no part of the story that featured the attraction being actually underwater. Well, that's all for the Seas and Living Seas Pavilion. So we'll move on to the next pavilion. And the next pavilion on our Reliving the Classic series here is the Imagination Pavilion. And the Imagination Pavilion opened with Epcot in 1982, and it's undergone three major versions. And actually, the Journey into Imagination ride did not open with Epcot. It opened a year later in 1983. But the pavilion opened in 1982, and the only thing here was the Magic Journeys 3D movie. So Magic Journeys, when the pavilion opened, actually was located right here where the Pixar Short Film Festival is now. There have actually been four different films in this particular theater, including the Short Film Festival. Started out in 1982 with Magic Journeys, then in 1986 was replaced with Captain EO. And then in 1994, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience debuted here and replaced Captain EO. And finally, Captain EO actually did return in 2009 after the death of Michael Jackson. 
And then sometime I believe in 2017 was when the Captain EO was permanently replaced with uh, the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival. And by the way, this theater is called the Magic Eye Theater. So the current version of the ride, Journey into Imagination with Figment, is actually the third version of the attraction. The original version was just Journey into Imagination, and it opened in 1983. It was much, much larger than the, than the version that is here now. In fact, the original queue area really only took up this main entry area, and that was pretty much it. Um, there was some behind me where this particular wall is as well, but the original queue inside was not very big. And the actual boarding area of the attraction was right around here, where you enter this new room. And there used to be a scene with Figment and Dreamfinder, and Figment was basically created uh, on this big, huge turntable that served as the beginning of the ride. And that turntable had issues, was uh, getting warped, and was not able to uh, move as well as it used to. So they removed that portion of the attraction, and now it's part of the queue. So basically right now, walking into the loading area, we're actually walking where the original beginning of the attraction used to be. So as we mentioned, the first version of this attraction featured Figment and Dreamfinder, and Dreamfinder was the one who created Figment. Then the second version actually didn't feature either of those two characters. Actually, it was just called Journey Into Your Imagination. It was more of a technical look at imagination uh, through technology and things like that. However, that version of the ride was wildly unpopular. The second version, Journey Into Your Imagination, was wildly unpopular, and it was replaced within uh, two years with the current version, which is Journey Into Your Imagination with Figment. They added Figment back in, and the attraction was more popular, but still not quite as good or as big as it was originally. So this version of the attraction the track is the same, by the way, on the Journey Into Your Imagination and the uh, Journey Into Your Imagination with, Nation with Figment. The track is the same, uh, but it rejoins the original attraction right around the Dreamport scene on the original attraction, if you're familiar with the original. Hey, on your tour, you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. There's sight, sound, smell, touch, coochie coochie go, and taste. Taste my chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. Left ear, right ear. Left, right. What? This is odd. Um, hello? Who is this? Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. Now I... Your mind has wings. And by the way, the tracks for all three attractions are similar, at least in the parts that are still here. Really all they did to the original attraction was they just shortened the track quite a bit. For instance, this is actually the work of art scene in the original attraction. If you remember all the white swans and all the beautiful music and the rose sound. So this was actually the work of art scene. And ironically enough, the scene here where you have to smell a, sm a skunk is actually formerly the scene where they had the mysteries and uh, kind of Edgar Allan Poe scary scene in the original ride. Here it comes. Now both the second and third versions of this attraction had the upside down house, but for the third version they made it Figment's house, and more colorful and more whimsical.
So again, like the truck was painted purple, everything was painted purple and orange figment colors. The second version was simply an upside down house. It wasn't nearly as much fun. And in the original version, I believe this was the brand new show scene. And then I believe this was the what about science area. Now this area used to have movies in the very original attraction about science and it had like slow motion video of water and organisms in the water and space and all kinds of things and Dreamfinder was in the middle right behind me. So as you can plainly see, imagination works the best when it's set free. You said it Doc! Imagination is a blast! attraction had a figment space uh, hitchhiker so that was kind of a homage to the original so here we are in the current version of the image works now the image works used to be upstairs in the glass atriums and they moved it downstairs because they took out a significant portion of the ride this actually still would have been the ride because uh, there was what about science and then I believe it was figment took your picture and then it was figment doing all kinds of active things so this still would have been part of the ride and then the exit after that Really cool area, lots of exhibits. Uh, just a shame that they shrunk the ride down so much between the first and second versions. And the image works are still pretty big, but I think one of the reasons they did this is because it was kind of hard getting all the guests uh, in and out of the area since it was upstairs. They had to use uh, elevators for uh, handicapped uh, people and they had stairways for everybody else. Now these um, pressure sensitive little uh, sound squares here were similar to these sound hexagons that were upstairs in the image works but there were so many cool things in the image works and as a kid going up there i was just captivated by it there were things where you could paint digitally uh kind of using like a touch pen which you know in 1984 or when i first came here that was mind-blowing um there were all kinds of just different technologies to try out there was even a conducting thing very similar to this where you could conduct with your arms and the music would get louder or softer so this was actually very similar this is homage to an attraction that was upstairs. There was also a rainbow corridor upstairs called Sensor and the colors changed as you walk through it. And of course this wouldn't have been a gift shop, this was the exit to the attraction. And you can see the stairway here where you used to be able to go upstairs and now if you're a DVC member you can go upstairs, it's the Disney Vacation Club lounge up there. So you can't go back into where the exhibits were, but you can go into the atrium and uh, enjoy beautiful views of the park, as well as just of the pavilion itself. So I do miss the image works being upstairs, but I do understand why they moved it and why they had to shorten the attraction due to the malfunctioning of the turntable that was at the beginning of the attraction. I guess I kind of wish that they had redesigned that area where the turntable was and kept it as part of the ride. But I'm sure they felt the need to extend the queue as well as have the gift shop there at the end and move the image works. So that's just a little history about the Imagination Pavilion. It's undergone a lot of changes, uh, not all of them positive in most people's opinion, but uh, it's still a really fun pavilion. And just those of us who remember the original do miss a lot of the wonder and amazement of the, of the original. I think this one is more, this version is more cute. The third version is very cute, it has figment, by the way there's no waterfall on here, must be under refurbishment, but this version is more cute, uh, and figment kind of serves as a whimsical host of imagination, and the first version was more um, filled with wonder, everything was all, figment was in awe of everything, and there was all this amazement about imagination, about all the things you could imagine and dream. By the way, as far as the feel of the second version, just journeying into your imagination, it was actually more of an intellectual feel, and so it really didn't fit the pavilion at all, and a lot of the guests really didn't enjoy it. By the way, I misspoke on the name of the attraction. The current version of the attraction is called Journey, Journey into Imagination with Figment, which is odd because the original attraction was just called Journey into Imagination, and it also had Figment. 
So uh, the and then the second version was journey into your imagination. So that's why I, I always thought, think this version is journey into your imagination with Figment. But either way, hope you enjoyed this look at the Imagination Pavilion. Well, that's all for now for this version of Reliving the Classics at Epcot. We hope you enjoyed the video. And as you noticed, we only covered Future World West and Spaceship Earth on this video. So let me know if you want me to do the rest of Epcot. We could do Future World East, we can do World Showcase, we can do all kinds of things. So let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future. There's a lot we can cover, a lot of facts and figures and fun. So, again, let me know. Also, be sure to leave us a like and a comment and just let us know if uh, I left anything out, if I had anything wrong. I tried to do the research on it, but I'd like to make sure that I actually uh, have everything correct. So leave a comment and let me know. Also, be sure to check out our sponsors, MickeyBlog.com and MickeyTravels.com for the best in free Disney vacation planning advice. Also, be sure to check out WindowRepairParts.us and use the coupon code RESORTTV1 for 20% off your purchase on WindowRepairParts.us. Also, be sure to check out our newest sponsor, MainStreetDVCResale.com. See how easy it is to sell your DVC commission-free. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us and hit the notification bell to get notified every time we go live or have a new video. So for now, have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Bye-bye. Now that you've finished watching this video, be sure that you're subscribed so that you can get all of the latest updates. Also, check out some other great videos on our channel. Have a great big beautiful tomorrow. Bye-bye.